time for My Boat. One topic that's always an area for discussion amongst boaters is the management of their boat's 12-volt power system. Now, everything on this panel here runs off of batteries in the boat that are either charged by the engine alternators or an onboard battery charger. This week on My Boat, we'll look at one of the most critical components in the system, the battery charger itself. To install the charger, you will need battery terminals, shrink tubing, fuse holders and fuses, battery cable, and quick ties. As with all projects similar to this one, it's out with the old first. With the battery switches and AC power off, all of the original positive and negative cables were disconnected from the isolator and battery banks. Next, the old charger was removed from the service panel and the AC wires were disconnected and the old charger along with all of its 12 volt wiring was discarded. Removing the end caps from the new smart charger revealed the electrical connection points, charger settings and mounting holes. Prior to installing, the charger must be set for the type of batteries being charged, so after consulting the manual, I set the rotary switch to 6 for flooded lead-acid batteries. And while it was convenient, I hooked up the battery temperature sensor wires as well. Knowing in advance that the dimensions of the new smart charger were larger, I pre-cut and drilled a piece of starboard, then mounted it to the existing panel. Next up, the smart charger was mounted vertically per the instructions for optimal cooling efficiency, using stainless screws in the pre-drilled holes. Recently, ABYC codes have changed, requiring protection of the charger from the batteries, so I had to install inline fuse holders for each of the three charger outputs on the service panel. With the charger in place, I measured and cut the lengths of battery cable required to connect the charger outputs to the fuse holders. Since the charger is capable of outputting its full 50 amps to one bank, based on the distance from the furthest battery bank, the installation instructions called for AWG6 cable to handle the load. Next, the process was repeated for the battery cables required to connect the fuse block to the three battery banks. The Protec charger has two grounds, so lengths of cable were measured and cut to run from the charging and chassis ground terminals to the common ground terminal for all three battery banks. The last step in preparing the 12 volt connections was to strip each cable end and crimp on tin marine grade ring terminals using a pretty serious crimping tool. Finally, heat shrink tubing was applied to each connection. Back in the engine compartment, the next task was to connect the three cables to the charger, just finger tightening the nuts. Then each cable was in turn connected to the three fuse blocks and secured tightly. With cables in place, the nuts on the smart charger connections were tightened down. Unlike the old charger, this new smart charger only requires one negative or ground cable in the charging circuit, which was connected to the charger. Next, the three positive cables to be connected to the batteries were connected to the fuse blocks. Since the house battery bank was located some distance away from the charger, the cable for this bank was connected directly to the positive feed to the bank inside the battery switch. Then the cables for the two starting batteries were connected directly to each battery, not through the isolator as it was before. Finally, the main negative cable and the ground for the smart charger's chassis were connected to the common ground terminal for the three battery banks. The last wire to be connected was the remote temperature probe that monitors and protects the batteries from overheating. With all of the 12 volt connections made, the final wiring task was to reconnect the AC power to the new smart charger as marked on the terminals. With all of the wiring completed, the covers were installed and secured. The last task was to insert the 60 amp fuses in the fuse blocks and secure the protective covers. After securing the cables with several quick ties, the battery switches were turned on and the AC circuit breaker reset to power up the smart charger. For boaters who really rely on their 12 volt batteries when out on the water, particularly at anchor, the investment in one of these new smart chargers is really worth it. First your batteries will last longer and they'll recover faster so you've got more 12 volt power to enjoy your time on the water.